Welcome to Vegas Revealed, episode 85. We visit Resorts World over Labor Day weekend. There is so much to discuss. Sean and I keep talking about it, so we're going to go through the whole rundown. Plus, the countdown is on to the opening of Zook Nightclub at Resorts World. You hear that? Oh, and it looks nice when you drive by it on the Strip. Also, the theater at Virgin Hotels finally makes its debut. We hear about the facelift the iconic venue received. It's really updated compared to what it had felt like for so long at the joint. Then our up close encounter with 50 Cent on the strip and Kevin Costner has a band? Who knew? Let's spin the wheel and get right to it. Welcome to Vegas Revealed, episode 85. We're inching toward 100. Thanks, everyone, for your support and your donations this week. I'm Dana Roselli. And I'm Sean McAllister. And we are still recovering from Labor Day weekend here in Las Vegas because Labor Day was huge. It really was. Lots of people in town, lots of visitors. I had at least two people I knew from out of Las Vegas in town for the weekend, so I had to try and fit everyone in. Yeah, we had visitors staying at our house for Labor Day weekend, so we were bouncing all over the place, doing brunch, doing shows, doing sightseeing, the whole nine. Right, and one place we were both at, which we went separately, but I was like, oh, I went to Resorts World over the weekend. And then you were like, oh, so did I. And we were comparing notes. And so we haven't done an update on Resorts World in a little while. So we thought, let's get to it. Because I've seen a lot of people talking about it on Twitter. And uh, uh, some people saying, eh, it still has a lot of work to do. You know, they aren't they aren't sure if they're in yet. You know, like, I'm not so sure about Resorts World. And so I wanted to talk about my experience there. You wanted to talk about yours. How was yours? Mine was pretty good. So we went after brunch on a Sunday afternoon. Oh, so you were tipsy. So we we just <laughs> needed to kill some time. Okay. <laughs> so we went over, hung out at Resorts World. Our, our friends were in town, so we showed them around. I thought it was, it was fine. First of all, getting there, a lot of people have been asking about the parking situation and whether or not they're requiring you to pay to self-park. And... I was a little nervous because as we pulled into the garage, we did have to take a ticket and wait for the little arm to go up to get into the garage. And so I was like, oh, is Labor Day weekend when they're finally going to, you know, pull the plug on free parking? And this is it, I guess. But on the way out, we didn't have to pay. The arm just went up as we pulled up to the little machine. So maybe it's like practice run. I don't know. It seems like it. Yeah. You want to get the arm working and make it move quick so everyone can come (laughs) and go because, you know, that's my biggest pet peeve. It is. I know. (laughs) When I went there, um, my friend that I was with was like, just valet. I'll pay for it. And because I just assumed it cost a valet. But when I pulled in, I'm like, it's valet free. And the guy's like, for now. Yeah. So it was great. Valet is still free. And you're right there in the front entrance. So FYI take advantage no date has been announced for paid parking yet so for now it's free and another place i noticed as we were walking around is uh, there's an elevator bank with a sign for the starlight lounge with which looked like it was up on like the 66th floor or something yeah it was and i've seen a couple posts on social media so it piqued my interest so while we were there and again i was with my friend who was visiting who loves to travel all around by the way he loved resorts world and i was glad to hear it because he visits a lot of hotels but i said let's go up to this 66 floor because from what i've seen on social media i've seen some pretty pictures of a lounge up there with a great view so we just went up and a lot of people wonder if you have to have like some sort of permission to get up there if you need to be staying there because it is in the Conrad Tower okay so no you go up to the elevator and you hit floor 66 you walk off and it's funny because there's kind of like a guy standing there and it's almost like you're like you feel like you're in this exclusive place and he's like you know welcome and then I'm like well where do we go and they're like these the lounge is that way and there's gaming this way and so there was this room with um just a few table games in there and people really? were playing yeah and then there was great paintings all over um there was a princess diana painting and a hmm. prince charles and um then you can circle down this hallway and you walk into the starlight lounge 
which is dark with lots of like, uh, you know, chocolatey colors and dim lights and couches. And so you can go in there. Apparently you need to reserve the couch areas ahead of time, but there's plenty of room at the bar. The bar is in the center and it's surrounded by glass with an incredible view of the Las Vegas Strip. And which direction does it look on the Strip? Is it looking like south towards Caesar's Palace or north up toward so both the stratosphere? Ways. Really? Yeah, so oh, wow. one side is facing the other, you know, north, and the other side is facing south. I think the only, there's an area where, so you can't sit out on the patio, but there's an area where you can walk out to, like, uh-huh. look outside, take pictures, and that faces south. So okay. you can open the door, go out there, take some pictures. Lots of people were there. But then it has glass on each side. So the bar is kind of like, you know, in the center. And then there's couch areas to the north and couch areas to the south. Oh, very cool. Yeah, they had I really like cool cocktails. And, you know, the wait staff was really nice. I just loved it. I loved the whole thing. I was sitting there with my friend who was visiting and he said, you know, there are not a lot of things like this in Las Vegas. And I'm like, what do you mean? There's tons of lounges. And he was like, no, there are not a lot of lounges that are at the top of resorts that have a view. And I was like, you know what? He's kind of right. You know, there's a couple at Mandalay Bay. Right. And then there's obviously the Strat, which is way north on the Strip. And I guess you can eat dinner at Paris, Las Vegas. True. Or go to the the bar. At the top of the Eiffel Tower. But yeah. And then there's the one at the Waldorf Astoria that's kind of in the center of the strip. But even that's not like all the way at the top. No, that's like midway up the building. You still get a good view. Yeah. But um, yeah, you're, I guess. Isn't that weird? Yeah. I've never thought about it. I I I never really thought about that either. It seems like a no brainer, doesn't it? (laughs) Right. It does seem like a no brainer. And the picture I took was getting a lot of comments on social media. They're like, oh, it looks like like you're in a helicopter. I'm like, no, I guess we don't see this shot a lot besides from... Folks that go on the helicopter tours over the strip huh. because there isn't one. Wow. <laughs> yeah. So it was beautiful. I loved it. If you get a chance, go to Starlight 66. Uh, you'll definitely enjoy yourself. Go grab a drink or make a night of it. Well, and we ended up on a patio uh, at another place on property at Resorts World. And this was at the store called Pepper in the retail area of Resorts World. And you may remember, if you listened to our podcast back when Resorts World opened, we spoke with the owners of this store, Pepper, uh, Sarah and Lincoln. Uh, And this is a, it's all about sensual connection Mm -hmm. and- Very uh, unique. Very unique. Nothing like it in Vegas. And super classy. The store wasn't open when we had uh, spoken with the owners. So I wanted to stop back in and see what the store looked like and- Super, super classy. Mm-hmm. Um, and so if you're expecting it to be like a, a sex shop that's down off the strip, the it's not boutique? like that at all. Right, okay. No, this could be any high-end boutique, really. And it's really nice. And Sarah happened to be there. And so she gave us the the grand tour, and we went back into the VIP room. And it is really cool. You push a button on the wall, and the, the wall slides open. You go down this hallway it's all like a a mirror a red mirrored glass on the walls with like vertical lights it almost felt like i was in a hip-hop video or something Mm. um and then there's another door that slides open and you get go into this lounge that has a patio that overlooks the strip which is that's different it's a great area and they were setting up to have a private event in that uh space as we were getting the little tour. Um, But definitely check out Pepper. They are having their grand opening uh, the first weekend of October. Um, So we may pop over there and talk to them more about it. But it's a great spot to check out if you find yourself at Resorts World. I saw a couple people walking around with bags that said Pepper. And I was like, oh, I'm glad they're doing well. Yeah, people were buying stuff. Well, listen, we even walked away with a a bag of coffee and a a candle. Oh, okay. Like for the house. So it's not just like sex toys sex stuff <laughs> right it's like all there's all sorts of lifestyle stuff there's even comfy robes in there yeah. so it's a it's a good spot to check out see that's that's sexy enough for me just coffee and a candle <laughs> that's more my style <laughs> Oh, my goodness. All right. Well, moving on. Um, We did eat at Fuhu there. That's the restaurant uh, that's kind of an Asian theme. We had the – I just want to recommend if you go there, everyone, that our favorite thing that we ate was we split the crusted 
filet mignon and it comes Ooh. out bubbling with a scr- it was delicious that was really really good so if you go to fuhu um try that out also um speaking of grand openings you mentioned pepper's gonna have their grand opening so is zook nightclub the nightclub is finally gonna open on september 17th tiesto will be performing and boy, when you drive by on the Strip, it looks gorgeous. It does. So up until now, they've been having all of their nightlife events at their pool. Their pool has been like the spot, and it's been popping. Their people have been up there and partying the night away. Yeah. Uh, but Zook is the indoor nightlife venue that is about to open and I know that it's going to be packed too. Yeah and I was driving over DI recently and I could kind of see they had this like outdoor covered patio area that looks like it'll be really cool kind of reminded me of and I can't think of which one it was but I'm thinking of Omnia outside kind of like their patio where there's like a bar out there and oh overhang. yeah yeah but anyway it looks gorgeous um from the outside I'm glad this is finally going to open Becky G is going to be DJing for night two I she's a big deal right she is she's yeah. huge yeah so apparently Becky G is a get um, and then they have a whole slew of different DJs on the roster. Um, and it's the first Zook group nightclub in Las Vegas. That's right. So, again, uh, September 17th is opening date for Zook nightclub over at Resorts World. And, Dana, you were also over at Caesars Palace a little bit? I was. So then my friend and I, we went to Caesars Palace on Sunday night. He wanted to go to Rayo's because he loves Rayo's. And we went there, and I was just going to say, we were both commenting that it was completely mobbed. Just like we always said, that Vanderpump Cocktail Garden, the line was down the hallway. But uh, the line for the Bacchanal Buffet was, you know, three deep. Jeez. Um, Yeah, the restaurants were busy. The casino floor, we were both like wow it's mobbed but i wanted to point out because i always talk about the reyos meatballs yep but my friend had the pork chop we like to split things and we split the pork chop holy cow this thing was the best really meal i have had in a long time it is delicious it is thick juicy and then they put these like peppers on top so it gives it a little spice and flavor and even the waitress was like isn't it good like it's one of our best items so really see you wouldn't think like looking at a menu the two things i would never think to order are meatloaf and pork chops i agree my friend wanted the pork chop and i was like uh because i we were gonna split two things and i'm like well i'm getting the bolognese and he's like well i'm gonna get the pork chop and i was like really but i just kept quiet because i was like all right whatever and then when i had half i was like (laughs) holy bananas (laughs) this thing is good Wow. Yeah, so pork Noted. chop at Rayo's. Get the pork Get chop. Get the pork chop. It really was good. <laughs> but I agree. I wouldn't order a pork chop normally. <laughs> <laughs> well, across the street from Caesar's Palace is where you will find Harrah's. They have a new headliner who's just started performing over there. Uh, a little singer guy by the name of Donny Osmond. <laughs> and we we have his new single stuck in our head because we just played we it. <laughs> we were watching his new music video. <laughs> he was dancing down in the parking garage. <laughs> With his leather jacket and his sunglasses. Anyway, gotta love Donny. Uh, he has now kicked off at Harrah's. You and I will be going to the... Um, one of the, the first shows this week. Yep. He's already been performing, but they do like a media night. So we're going to that, and we'll talk more about Donnie's show, because this is his first solo residency in Las Vegas. There's been Donnie and Marie together forever. Yeah, and I there are a lot of... There are a lot of things that I'm already hearing about the show, but I want to save it until we have actually gone to see it and we can talk about our firsthand experience with Donny Osmond. He's always such a great guy. He is. And he's going to be joining us here on uh, Vegas Revealed in the coming weeks. But Did I ever tell you uh, the time that Donny came on? I was interviewing Donny, came on the show at, when I was working at a local TV station and just announced that him and Marie weren't going to do the show anymore. And she what? had no idea. <laughs> <laughs> and then like, yeah, he just, and then he went on like my Insta story and he was talking about it. And then it was like this big thing and Marie's like, I have no idea what he's talking about. And then I don't know. Cause they, they had kind of butted heads toward the end there of like, she wanted to kind of end the show and he wanted to continue doing it. So I'm happy that now Marie's doing what, what she wants to do. And Donnie will still have his show. But I felt a little like, 
weird energy at that time. <laughs> and I was like, are, Donnie, are you sure you want to go with this? Like, there's no press release out. There's no nothing. He's like, yeah, the show, you know, it's been a great run. And I was like, what's happening? So anyway, it's a funny story that maybe I'll tell in more depth next week after Donnie's show. <laughs> well, and it's funny because every time their contract would come up, mm-hmm. there would be all these there would be these little hints that the show was going to end right. and that they were going to finally be done doing their show. Um, but then they would re-up their contract and keep going. So I wonder if that was one of the strategies. Maybe. I wonder if that was a negotiation period. Yeah, could be, could be. It was really funny, though. I, I love Donnie. I do, too. It'll be good to chat with him and see his new show over at Harrah's. Okay, we talked about this last week, and it was our shoot that we had over at the new Sugar Factory. I think we called it a two-story Sugar Factory, but I want to say when we got there, it was like three it was floors, three. right? Yeah. yeah. It was, um, it's and right we know up- that because we went up and down those <laughs> stairs did. about five times. We did. I got a lot of steps in that night. Um, it's at the corner of Harmon and Las Vegas Boulevard. Um, great patio. Love the patio. Beautiful view. And uh, we went there to shoot... Uh, B-roll and do a video of 50 Cent's appearance at Sugar Factory. He has a new drink there, goblet I should say, called the Candy Shop. So, um, you know, you never know what's going to go down, you know, but like what it's going to be like. And 50 and his entourage walked in and I don't know, Sean, take it away from there. (laughs) It was bedlam. It was uh, just insanity ensued. There were fans who were hopping up out of their seats to take selfies. and the tops were falling down. Oh, my God. There were <laughs> there was definitely some tugging up that needed to happen <laughs> here and there. Uh, people were loving the fact that 50 Cent was in Sugar Factory while they were just sitting there unsuspectingly eating their meal. Mm-hmm. And Fiddy walks into the... Little candy shop, starts scooping some candy. <laughs> yeah. Poses for some pictures. Exactly. He had some food and, you know, we were able to get some video with him and we put that video out on our social media. Um, but, you know, great appearance. He's got, uh, I think he's going to the one in Queens like this week. So he's kind of doing the rounds. He is. Uh, and I believe it's his uh, brand of cognac that's used in uh, the candy shop goblet exactly and what an entourage he has i was like we were the house crew okay and they just kept pushing us back and i'm like listen we're here to make 50 look good (laughs) we want to shoot video 50 and so anyway they have you know they have their rules and so we followed the rules and finally we we got in there and everything was good so if you want to check out our video we have it on our youtube and also our instagram and uh you can check out the new three-story Sugar Factory, right at the corner of Harmon and Las Vegas Boulevard. It's right next door to the two-story Taco Bell. Oh, yeah. And we have two more shoots at Sugar Factory coming up. We'll be there to shoot Scott Disick's appearance, you know, the uh, former Kardashian family boyfriend, husband. Was it, were they married, Courtney? Uh, I don't believe they were married. Yeah. Some kids, though. Yeah, but he's a huge part of keeping up with the Kardashians. Anyway, everyone knows Scott Disick, and he'll be there. Uh, also, we have a shoot with Polly D, DJ Polly D, who lives in Las Vegas, but everyone knows him from, obviously, Jersey Shore. And I know, Sean, he's got some, you know, very famous slogans that you like to repeat. Cabs are here. <laughs> So he always lets the house know when the cabs are here. That's right. <laughs> and then, you know, randomly, I, I ran into Polly D on the... <laughs> it, this is so weird. I was in the Bahamas at Baja Mar, and Polly D was there. And it was so random because we're both, you know, he lives in Las Vegas. I've interviewed him on local TV many times. But anyway, I was walking along the the sand and my friend said there's Polly D we went up and had a good chat and he was talking about you know his residency at Dre's and all that kind of thing so it'll be good to see Polly again he's always up for a good chat and always up for a good time he is he is that'll be great and a couple quick notes Derek Huff has his show kicking off at the Venetian soon so make sure you get your tickets to that if you love dance and choreography should be great also Zappos Theater at Planet Hollywood is now officially open One Republic performed there Uh, last weekend and then also Magic Mike Live is opening at the Sahara and tickets are on sale for that they're going to have their big grand opening show Sean and I will be at that so we'll have a lot to talk about over the next month it's exciting stuff 
As Las Vegas Entertainment gets back up to full steam, we have a new venue that's opening here in Las Vegas. It's new but familiar, too. I know. Always exciting. A lot of people know it formerly as The Joint when it was at the Hard Rock, but now Virgin Hotels has been open, and the venue there, the concert venue, is opening officially. We have Tiffany Bosman with us from AEG. Welcome. Hi there. We're excited to talk about this because I think a lot of people have been waiting to get inside there again. I feel like, first of all, for people that live here, it's such a Las Vegas staple. But also people that come into town, they know what a great venue that is to see concerts at a size that's big, but not too big. Definitely. I mean, it still has um, it's big enough for a great rock show to come in, but it's still intimate enough for when you see some of those big rock acts or, you know, whatever genre it might be. You really feel like you're seeing something special, you know. And for for those of us who have been here in Las Vegas for Mm -hmm. a decade plus um, and who have grown up kind of with the joint as such an iconic entertainment venue here in Las Vegas, what are you doing now that it's a virgin property Mm -hmm. to kind of honor the iconic moments, but really bring it into the to a new era as well? Well, you know, the great thing about that room, um, be it the joint or now as the theater at Virgin Hotels Las Vegas, is that the room always had really great bones, right? You know, the shape and the sounds, the size, you know, the layout was all really great. So a lot of that has stayed the same. What I think is really special about the venue now, when Virgin got updated, we went ahead and updated certain parts of that theater. Um, There's a lot more to offer as far as VIP experiences go. The second level where a lot of people remember um, the individual suites that are on that level, and then each side kind of had VIP VIP seating that were um, tall boys. Now that whole level has been completely renovated. Um, along house right, um, where a lot of those tables were set up before. Now it's a beautiful VIP lounge with a brand new bar inside of it. We're calling it the social VIP lounge. So it's a great place for people to be able to buy a general um, ticket into that lounge area and kind of mix and mingle with their friends or meet other people up that are coming to the show. Um, And also within that area, there are Uh, booths and like banquettes, different VIP seating options that you can upgrade to once you're in there and you can get uh, bottle service, cocktail service, everything like that there. Um, That's that's a big difference from it. And I think that really updates it and kind of really brings what people are looking for now when they're going to concerts in Las Vegas. Um, Also on the main floor, there's a brand new VIP section. We're calling it the front and center VIP. And that is a space that is between the front gold circle area and the back of the um, main floor. So kind of by where the sound booth is, that whole strip has been turned into VIP seating options. There's, um, I believe, four to six uh, booths on each side where people can have cocktail service there, but still be like very much in the action, very close to the stage, um, but have a little bit more of a VIP amenity without having to lose that feeling that you're surrounded by the crowd. So I think a a lot of what we've done with the VIP is is kind of what has brought it into a more current uh, venue environment. And I mean, it's just beautiful. The updates that we've made are, are truly gorgeous. So, you know, that's an added value. All the suites have been redone, the furniture, the textures, it's really updated compared to what it had felt like for so long at the joint. And I know in the middle section, it was always the areas where you could stand. Is that still there? Or is there seats there now? Anything change in the middle, the crux of it? Are you talking about on the main floor? Yeah, on the main floor. Yeah, so we have different um, setups for the show. So on a fully seated show, you know, we have uh, chairs brought in for that whole main floor. But then some shows we have the front where it's all GA standing and then the back is seated. And then there are other shows where it's completely GA. Um, So it kind of depends on what kind of show it is. Uh, You know, for like a rock show, for example, Machine Gun Kelly, it's all GA on the floor. That's going to be a sold out like, total powerhouse of an event. Um, In that scenario, that front and center VIP, you'll still have your own space, but around you will be people um, with all the energy in the GA uh, type of environment. 
And I want to talk about uh, the lineup that you've mm -hmm. already announced. Mm -hmm. I know that you have yeah. more entertainers planned. But first, you have some really cool uh, ticket packages available, too. There's the Me and Three, where you get to kind of get a group of your friends together and come to the shows. Yeah, so for some of the shows coming up, um, for Gary Clark Jr., for a lot of the rock shows that we have in October, including like Violent Femmes and um, Dropkick Murphys with Rancid are coming. Violent Femmes are coming with Flogging Molly. Uh, there's a couple different ticket options. So the Me Plus Three is you buy three tickets, you get the fourth one free. And that's activated in the purchase flow. So when you go to access.com, to buy tickets, or if you go to, you know, the Virgin website and get through the purchase flow like that, when you go there, there'll be an option for the me plus three. And so it's a great way to be able to like squat up, bring three of your friends. So many of us haven't been able to see concerts with our friends for so long, right? So we're all kind of craving to get together. Let's meet up. Um, and that's a great opportunity for that. Well, and with, you know, you're kicking off with Gary Clark Jr. When this mm -hmm. runs, that concert will most likely be over by then. So let's talk about the okay. other ones that you have coming in. I know you just mentioned a few of them, but um, for folks listening that might want to get tickets for the future, we have a lot of listeners from around the world that are dying to get back to Vegas and want something to do this year. So what are some of the options? I'm kind of stoked to hear you say Violent Femmes. I know, that's our era. That's like yeah, my, that my, was my oh jam. My <laughs> they're one of my favorites, for yeah. sure. So um, in later September, uh, September 25th, we have Lady A coming through with the uh, What a Song Can Do tour. And then in October, we have a lot of stuff. We have Russ on October 8th, who's more of like an R&B hip hop artist. Um, then the show we were just talking about, Flogging Molly and Violent Femmes are here on October 9th. And then on October 15th, we've got Rancid with Dropkick Murphys and the Bronx uh, is on that bill as well. On the 16th, we have Machine Gun Kelly, which is going to be completely wild and amazing. Um, that one's mostly sold out. I think there's still some VIP packages available there for people that are, are trying to get into that show. October 17th, there's a day to remember. Primus is going to be there on the 24th. And then into November, we've got Carol G, Porter Robinson, Mike Towers, Co. Wetzel. And then in December, we've got our first residency in the room. Journey is coming back. We're very excited to have them back in that room. We have had them there um, twice before, I believe. And they haven't been in there since 2017. So they're going to be doing six shows over NFR. So they're playing December 1st, 2nd, 7th, 8th, 10th, and 11th. So I think that'll be really fun. And they put on such a great show. Um, Randy Jackson's back on bass with them. I don't know if you guys knew this or not, but he was originally in Journey. Wow, really? that's a big deal. Yes. I Randy didn't know Jackson that. from American Idol, you know, like he was originally in Journey. He's back with them, which is really exciting. If you want a really fun time, Google Randy Jackson journey. And there are some amazing photos of him throwback on stage, like amazing outfits, like super, super fun. So he's going to be back uh, with the band. We're really excited about that. We also have little big town coming on December 3rd and 4th. So that's over NFR as well. And then we have Daughtry and seven dust on Sunday, the fifth. So, I mean, really for that couple of weeks for NFR were jam-packed, really something for everybody. If you want to see more country, great, come see Little Big Town. If you want something a little more counter-programmed, but something that everybody still loves, come see Journey. It's a great lineup. And and I know, you know, the property, even Virgin, it obviously opened and we were in the middle of a lot of stuff. Do you feel like this venue opening is almost going to complete the property too? Yeah. I mean, I feel, I feel that way. You know, a lot of the other stuff has opened although slowly, you know, they rolled out some stuff, then the pools opened there. But this venue, I think, really kind of closes that loop. And it's the full offerings of what that property can show people. Um, and, you know, we can have a, we can bring a lot of people to the property. The venue um, goes up to a 4,500 person capacity. Our, our events are going to be so awesome. And like to have all that music happening again, but then also the venue already has, or the property already has so much other stuff happening. So you can tack on dinner before, go to the bar after, you know, you could have dinner at Cassie Beach House and then go to Money Baby afterwards and like see this concert in between. So it's really kind of that glue in the middle to making it a reason to spend an entire night out at Virgin. 
And Tiffany, you know Las Vegas, you know entertainment. What's the most exciting thing for you about being a part of this team that's reopening the theater at Virgin Hotels? You know, it's been really exciting just because it was a place that we already all loved, right? As we talked about this and to be able to like update it and give it some love and kind of shine it back up again. And then, you know, clearly it didn't open how we planned that it was going to open. We had had all these plans, you know, before the pandemic hit. So it was a little bittersweet that it didn't happen in the same timeline we all thought, but at the same time, it almost makes it more special to have it finally happen now. You know, we've all gone through so much and it's just really nice to start seeing concerts happening again, to be able to reopen our doors and welcome our friends, our family, the artist fans from Las Vegas and all over the country and, you know, all over the world back into that room to be able to have a really good time, see that live music, um, see their friends that they've been missing and just have that experience. So um, the team has worked tirelessly. There's a lot of people that were there from before that are back with us. We have some new people with us. So it's really special, you know, all around. And we're just really excited to have people back in that room celebrating what we all love is live music and entertainment in Las Vegas. Yeah. I mean, I think, you know, Sean and I have been to a lot of shows over the last uh, couple months because there's been a lot of openings mm -hmm. and they seem uh, packed, busier than you. It's like, you're right. People definitely want to get out and they want to enjoy life again. They want to see live music. I noticed mm -hmm. that the theaters are are full to the brim. And sometimes if there's a show after, we'll leave and there's a line for the next one. And so, mm -hmm. I mean, it's it's time. Anything you can share with us about the Resorts World AEG shows? Anything you want to reveal on <laughs> Vegas Revealed? Come on. <laughs> well, I have, I have a good... Uh, my colleague, Chris Lingle, handles all of those shows. So, you know, she's going to be the one with all the surprises and the and the insight there, you know, maybe you guys will have to talk to her as well. But I do know um, we're just really excited to have Celine back and really excited to welcome, you know, Carrie Underwood and Katy Perry and Luke Bryan to that venue. And um, the property is beautiful. You know, the theater is going to be amazing. And Celine is such a staple in this town. And seeing her live is really magical, you know, be it if you consider yourself a Celine Dion fan or not, do not miss the opportunity to see Celine. You know, it, it's breathtaking. You're going to know every song. She's amazing. You know, she's a Las Vegas icon. So we're really excited to have her back. And that property is beautiful and the casino is beautiful. And it's just another reason to come to Las Vegas and see it even brighter than it was before. Yeah. Well, fortunately, yeah. I have a lengthy email chain with Chris going on. So <laughs> we'll get all the scoop on Resorts World because those okay, openings great. are coming up really soon here. But state-of-the-art yeah. brand new theaters yeah. are, we're, yes. you know, we're excited to have that here in Las Vegas. Look at all these places opening and just, you know, it's a time where we kind of need a boost. We need excitement. And I think, I think it's working. Well, we're super excited to get over there and get inside the theater at Virgin Hotels. Tiffany, thank you so much for your time and for all the hard work to get the theater ready for reopening. Yeah, thank you guys. Thanks so much for uh, chatting with me. Of course. Yeah, you heard her talk about uh, a lot of the shows coming up. Sounds great. Go to virginhotelslv.com to find more information and ticket info, schedules, all that kind of thing. But yeah, like you mentioned, Sean, the Violent Femmes, I mean, that was like our era. Ugh. <laughs> Especially where we're from, Rochester, New York. I don't know. They were big there. They were. Uh, always at festivals that. and that kind of thing. Yeah, good stuff. Yeah, it's going to be good. Um, what do you say we get to some tips? And Dana, my mind was blown when... I heard about this first tip. <laughs> well, I thought, huh? Yeah, both of us were like, I didn't know Kevin Costner had a band. But yeah, listen to this, everyone. Kevin Costner and Modern West are riding into Vegas for their Tales of Yellowstone tour at Sunset Station on November 6th. So we went, wait, the Kevin Costner? What? Huh? Never heard of Modern West. Well, yeah, he has a band called Modern West. And they're coming to perform at the amphitheater there outside at Sunset Station 
on November 6th. Did you, uh, it was blown. I, my mind was blown. I had no idea. I had no idea he was a musician. This is so cool. And it, it was surprising that when Kevin Costner and Modern West come to Las Vegas, <laughs> do they choose to play on the Las Vegas Strip? No, they don't. Yeah. They are coming off the Strip, coming to Henderson to perform at Sunset Station, which is one of the station casinos that is off the Las Vegas Strip. I know, and apparently they've been around since 2007, and they have toured the globe. So. Where have I been? I don't know. Where have I been? I know. I knew Steve Martin did like some music, and then what's that man? Uh, what's that man? Dan the band. Dan the man. Lieutenant what's Dan. Yeah, the him. Lieutenant he's, Dan band. Yeah, he's got Gary a band Sinise. too. Yeah, him. He's got a band too. <laughs> And then, wait, there's somebody else. Oh. Um, you mean that woman? Kevin Bacon. Kevin Bacon. He does. He and his, the, the Bacon brothers, right? Yeah. They have a band. See, there's all these, like, actors, <laughs> like, A-listers that have bands. Gary Sinise, the man, Kevin Bacon, Steve Martin, and Kevin Costner. I love it. So anyway, it sounds like it'll be a great show. Uh, if you've watched the show Yellowstone, which I have not, but tons of people have, and they love it, stars Kevin Costner. Apparently, the Tales of Yellowstone tour, I'm sure, has something to do with the show he was in. It sounds like it. Mm-hmm. It sounds like it would be a good crossover project there. Right. Tickets are forty two fifty. They start at forty two fifty. They go up to eighty two fifty plus fees. Doors open at six p.m. I went there recently for a country concert. Loved it. Great venue. So why not go see Kevin Costner and his band, The Modern West, on November 6th? <laughs> there you have it, folks. You can see how shocked we are. I want to hear his voice. I'm, I'm going to have to Google it after this. I just keep thinking Dances with Wolves. <laughs> and I'm thinking The Bodyguard. <laughs> see? We're very different. <laughs> okay, Dana. My tip of the week is uh, the early bird gets the worm. Mm-hmm. And what I mean by this, uh, we went to a comedy show over at Park MGM uh, last Saturday night, and we waited until after the show to grab dinner, and we just went over to Italy, which is right there also at Park MGM. By the time we finished dinner, you know, it was probably getting to be around 1030, and we're like, oh, you know what? We'd love to go and grab some gelato, which they have a big gelato stand right along the strip there at Italy. And as we went down the steps to the gelato stand, it was closed. Ah, come on, it's Vegas, Saturday night. The gelato... Labor Day weekend. ...and desserts were closed at 10.30 on a Saturday night on Labor Day weekend. And it is a sign of the times because there are a lot of places like that that are closing down early on the Strip. No more a 24-hour town. I know. I do notice that. When I walk through, there's a lot of things that close early. And even the forum shops, I want to say on the weekends, are open to like 10. And the weekday, it might be, I, I don't know what time, but my point is a lot of the stores inside the forum shops close early. So even if you're there, you may eat. But when you leave the restaurant, like if you wanted to shop after eating, they're all closed. I think it's a lack of finding people to work there. Yeah. Maybe the crowds they feel aren't as big later. Also, someone I know was saying, you know, when you work that 10 to 7, 8-hour shift, in order to stay open two hours more, you would have to bring in another Mm. crew. And so instead of extending hours, they're just closing at 7. So anyway, um, a lot of things are closing earlier. You're right. And so it is something to look up before you leave. If you have an agenda in your head, like I'm doing this, this is what I want to do, make sure it's open. And make sure that you get your gelato early. Mm Mm-hmm. Because that stuff is good. Yeah. <laughs> I know you love your and gelato. And it's worth it. Gel- oh, gelato is amazing over there at Italy. Mm. Mm. And then they have the the fresh cannoli stand right next door. You get to choose your cannoli filling. Yeah, that's always good. Mm. A cannoli is hard. To, a true cannoli is hard to find, but Italy has them. Oh, it's so yeah. good. All right. Well, it was closed for you. How was the comedy show? Uh, the comedy show was good. Who was it? Uh, it was John Mulaney, who okay. is a writer, a former writer for Saturday Night Live. Um, he has several Netflix specials, if you look him up. Um, it was a good show, although he's been very open about the fact that he uh, went to rehab over the past year. And that's what the bulk of the comedy routine 
centered around. Hmm. And it kind of, there were parts that made me really sad. Yeah. I was kind of sad that he had to go through all that. And it kind of seemed like he was doing the comedy bits to try and work through the issues that he's, you know, still having or whatever. But it wasn't the normal comedy routine that I'd expected from him. Mm -hmm. But overall, it was good. All right, and that was at the Park Theater. So, yeah, it's been a busy few days here at Operation Vegas Revealed, and (laughs) I think that's probably it for today. But we've got a lot of things that we're going to head to this week, and we'll, of course, be back next week with episode 86. We thank you for your donations. We thank you for buying our merchandise, and we hope you have a good one. Bye. Let's get away.